Hey guys, thanks for coming back. Tonight, we're gonna build a feather pattern Arkansas toothpick. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do here is throw some layout dye on our piece of material. We're using feather pattern Damascus, so we definitely wanna make sure that we lay everything out so that the feather runs right down the center of the blade. It's very important when you're doing a dagger to get everything symmetrical. So I'm drawing a center line and a line where I'm going to put the guard there. And now I'll scribe off an equal amount of distance from the center line on each side. You could use a bandsaw for this, but I feel fairly comfortable just walking up to my grinder and hogging off the excess material. I actually think it's really fast to do it this way. Got a bucket of water here. I use a 36 grit belt and I just go to town. I found that if you use a bandsaw, you're still going to come over to your grinder and clean it up anyway, so you can cut an entire tool out of that process and just grind off the excess material. I'm thinning the blade down slightly where it meets the guard so that the lines will flow through the guard right into the handle. Purely aesthetics. Scribing the center line for the cutting edge. And I also want you to take notice right here when I bring this knife blade up, you'll see that I mark some lines on the flats. Those are grind two lines for my bevels. When you see me before heat treat, you'll notice that I didn't grind all the way to those lines. Those are reference lines. That's where my objective for grinding will be after heat treatment. So I scribe those lines now to give me a good visual aid as to how high I should grind my bevels before heat treatment. Go ahead and throw in my maker's mark here. And we're going to get this thing heat treated. Get ready, guys. I think that the footage I got here of quenching the knife was some of the best footage that I've ever got in any of my knife making videos of the knife quench. It went really well. I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oil with my chain here. And I added a little camera trick. Who doesn't love a good camera trick here and there? If you've ever been this far along and making a knife and you're getting ready to heat treat and you felt nervous, tell me about it down below in the comments, guys. Now it's time to make that grain pop. So we're gonna go ahead and hand sand this thing out after heat treatment. Everything's completely hand sanded up to 500 grit. We're gonna throw it in my ferric chloride and distilled water mixture. We're gonna do this several times and I want this grain to be nice and deep on the etch because I'm gonna go ahead and do a coffee etch on this. Here it is right out of the etchant. I haven't done the coffee etch yet so you'll see it's kind of a neutral drab color. I'm gonna polish up the top 15 and 20 layers and then I'm going to throw it in a nice coffee etch so it really makes that pop. We're using brass for the guard material. I've got it chucked up in the milling machine and I'm going to go ahead and mill a slot slightly smaller than the thickness of the blade and then I'll hand fit it to the blade so it's nice and seamless. Now that the blade's finished, I've got it taped up so that it won't mar the surface of the blade. Look at that fitment on that guard. It's absolutely perfect. This is one way to shape a guard. I'm going to go ahead and put my layout die on there and I've made a cardboard template. I slide the template up to the knife blade and I scribe it. Then I'll flip that template over to the other side of the knife blade and then you get this symmetrical pattern here. I'm going to go ahead and grind the circumference all the way around before I mount it up. You'll notice when I slide this guard on, it doesn't go all the way home without me having to drive it on with a mallet. That's a good fit right there. You'll notice it comes right up to the shoulders, 
snap. Perfect. Let's use some desert iron wood. Absolutely fantastic wood. Takes an amazing polish. I think it's going to complement this dagger perfectly with the brass guard and the feather pattern. The feather pattern runs one direction and the grain in this wood's going to run in the same direction as the feather. I'm mixing up my epoxy here. You can bed your handle separately, but personally this handle will never come off this knife so I like to do it all in one step. I fill the handle void with epoxy, drive my pen in, and then I put it in my jig here, clamp it down so it's nice and tight. Make sure that if there's any squeeze out at all, that you clean it off with a little acetone and some rags or some Q-tips. I want to bring attention to the fact that I shape my lugs on the guard first with the grinder. Right there. See how I came in and I cut my lug on the guard first? That gives me an idea of where I'm going to grind to. Now see my line across the guard right there? That gives you a nice reference point to know how to shape those lugs. Make sure you wrap your sandpaper around a block when you do your transitions between two different materials. I'm going to go ahead and buff this guy out, make sure that I get the underside of the lugs, and make that brass pop. This is my trusty mag and aluminum polish by Mothers. It really works wonders on brass, nickel silver, and hardwoods. Give it a try. A knife really needs a place to live to be complete, so we're going to go ahead and make a sheath for it. I made this cute little leather knife a few videos back. It was a Kiridashi video. If you're interested, you can go watch that. I'll put a link down below for it. The first thing I do is I cut out the front and the back of the sheath, and then you'll see me lay the knife down on another piece of leather, and I'll mark around it, and that's going to be the welt of the knife sheath. There's the front and the back. Now let's cut out the welt. Basically, you cut a third piece of leather, you lay the knife on it and you draw around it and that's going to protect your stitching layer so that the edge of your knife doesn't cut through your stitches. Mark out all the lines on the front and the back. We can glue in the welt, glue the front to the back. And we're ready to stick it together now. Glue in the welt first, and then the front and the back. I am drilling these holes for a reason. I wanted the holes to be a little larger because I'm going to use an artificial sinew. And I've chosen also to do this one in a brown color because I think it's going to complement that artificial sinew. What do you think of that? I think it's a really handsome package. The knife and the sheath complement each other well. I think the lines flow really nicely. That coffee etch just really makes it pop, doesn't it? Look at the contrast between the, the dark layers and the 15 and 20 layers after they're polished up and then the darker layers are etched. It's amazing. As always, guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. Please go check out some of my other stuff. And if you haven't yet subscribed, it only takes one second to hit that subscribe button. And then make sure you go down below and tell me that you subbed. And I'll greet you down there and say hi. Thanks, guys. See you on the next video.